Think of a conversation where your emotional reaction got in the way. Maybe you got choked up and couldn't articulate your point. Or maybe you grew really, really angry, only to realize later that what you were angry about wasn't even all that important to you. Sometimes, it feels like we don't have full control over our emotions. But what if we didn't have to be that way? What if our emotions weren't able to take over? With EMDR, that might be possible. When we get a physical wound, our body gets busy healing itself quickly. We get a cut, the body does its thing, and it fixes it all up. And as long as the wound isn't too big, it takes care of business, don't have to worry too much about it. Same thing with the brain. When we have these negative events that occur, and they can be major traumas, they can be little traumas, they can be just something where, you know, a friend rejected you and it was just too much to, for your brain to figure out. So these are wounds that instead of like a cut, these are things that are a little too big for, we didn't have enough coping capacity, enough skills for this particular thing or enough support to get past this particular thing. So the brain stores it in its original form. And because the brain works on association, everything that happens to us all day, every day, kind of comes in, the brain goes searching for things to make sense of whatever it is that it's experiencing and when it finds familiar information in one of these capsules the capsule gets opened we feel all of that stuff but usually we have no idea why or where it's coming from in EMDR what we're looking to do is we're purposefully going to find those capsules so those negative experiences that when you went to sleep and your brain tried to process it for days weeks months whatever before it put it away we're going to open them on purpose while you're completely awake and alert and we're gonna apply bilateral movement. So I'll ask you a series of questions and we're getting that, that capsule wide open. Then we apply this bilateral stimulation. So it can be eye movements, it can be tappers that you hold. In doing that, the brain starts to make those connections like it wanted to do during rapid eye movement, but it couldn't. So in essence, EMDR helps your brain do what it couldn't do in dream sleep. The question then is, why does our brain fail to process memories in the first place? Because sometimes they get stuck. So trauma um, is not the event. Trauma is not the rape or the murder that you witness or the, uh, the divorce that you experience from your parents. That's not trauma. Trauma is the internal response that you have to that. So when something abnormal happens, like we have a response. We're either terrified, sad, overwhelmed. And if we don't have someone to process that with, then it's internally processed and then it gets stuck in your nervous system. The brain can't process all of our wounds through dream sleep because sometimes the things that happen have overwhelmed our ability to cope. The wound is too big. Instead of the cut, it's your appendix burst. While trauma isn't as immediately life-threatening as appendicitis, the past informs the present. All of your memories, positive and negative, dictate how you view yourself. So Everybody has negative self-beliefs. All of us have shame. All of us think things that just are inaccurate about ourselves. A lot of negative self-beliefs include, I'm not safe or I'm gonna die. There's something wrong with me. I'm unworthy. I'm not good enough. I can't handle it. I don't have a voice. And we wanna shift the negative self-belief from something like, I'm powerless to, I can control what I can and be okay. And it's not just that talking to ourselves differently and trying to convince ourselves of that, it's that once we reprocess this memory that made us feel powerless and our brain shifts over to, I can control what I can and I really can be okay. It's that, you know, people talk about from head to heart. You really know, you get it, you feel the truth of that. And then it starts to shift the way you act in your everyday life because you're no longer being triggered by all kinds of random things. So when working with negative beliefs, you know, depending on what age you are, they can be different. When someone has a belief they hone in on of, I'm not safe, I could die. A lot of times that can come from very early on. As a child, one of the traumas that I experienced was my dad had had a major motorcycle accident, had gotten brain damage, and I witnessed him being violent with my mom. And that, along with a couple of other incidents, made my little three-year-old self, who came out and saw this thing happening and screamed, therefore the violence stopped. What did that make me powerful in that moment? But my self-belief, which was obviously not conscious or verbal for my three-year-old self. I couldn't figure this out, but it was, I have got to be in control because these grown-ups around me have no clue. And so, you know, I became this kid who was always throwing fits 
because I felt like I had to control everything and if I wasn't controlling it, it was a life or death situation. So growing up throughout my life, I was more high anxiety and more intense because there was this inner sense of I have to be in control. And so in EMDR, going back and reprocessing that three-year-old memory and a few other things really shifted that over to where I really do feel like I don't. <laughs> like I don't have to be in control, it's okay. And the intensity that I used to feel and the anxiety, that's all settled down. My, my insides are calm because of EMDR. And the great thing about EMDR is that it's not just for people with complex traumas. It can be useful for just about everyone. I want to be clear that these trauma memories don't have to be what everyone considers trauma. It doesn't have to be big stuff. It really can be mom just being consistently unavailable or, you know, dad yelling at you on a regular basis for coming up to get a hug when he comes home from work. It can be that kind of stuff. EMDR has been around since 1987, when Dr. Francine Shapiro first discovered and developed it. So if it's been around that long, and if it's been so effective, why then is it not more widely known? I think number one is it's weird. People think, you know, what, you're gonna like wave your fingers in front of my eyes and I'm gonna get better. There's also a lot of doubt by people who haven't experienced it, which was true for me. I knew of it for many years as a therapist and I was always like, I don't know, maybe it's what people say, but you know, whatever, until I decided to actually go get trained. And as soon as I did, I came home and I was doing it with all of my clients who would get better, but it seemed like there was always this ongoing struggle and I beat my head against the wall. Like, what? What do we need to do to help this person? I started doing EMDR and things just started busting loose and I was leaving feeling like I was creating miracles, literally. And I think that's another piece of it is, in part, it's it seems too good to be true and people don't wanna believe something that's too good to be true. It's a very complex therapy, and with a lot of people, it can be used and it does amazing things just like that. But with people who have more complex histories, EMDR can't just be used all by itself in its standard protocol form. Uh, you do have to have a whole lot more information on complex trauma, on dissociation. It's been around for 30-ish years, and it is currently becoming very popular because people are finally starting to recognize, um, I mean, people are coming to trainings in droves at this point, and that's really good to see. If you're interested in looking further into EMDR therapy, you'll be happy to know that its growing popularity has made it almost as easy to access as talk therapy. Go get EMDR. Everybody needs it. We all have negative self-beliefs, and where there is a negative self-belief, there's an EMDR target.